what is going on you amazing drag racers out there hope your tuesday is going well number one cat dad here with you this is the dorky and 40 rc channel i am chad and we are going to get fast on facebook today let's go we got a lot of great topics to talk about this week guys a lot of good stuff going on first of all pro line ultra blues awesome i'm going to show you i actually found a set at hobby town we'll take a little close look at those on the bench real quick just for you guys to see want to talk about some no prep RC YouTube channels that are out there for you guys because I know a lot of you don't go on Facebook at all but you love to watch videos on YouTube so we're trying to spread that no prep RC love I've got emails to get stucks Jeff Zuccarell and to Gary Campbell of straight line spoilers down below in the description I know again a lot of you don't get on Facebook if you're looking to reach out to Jeff for prep or, or the wild awesome performance tire conditioner or Gary for or a spoiler definitely reach out to those guys you can get a hold of them with their emails down there now so i got those for you guys and it looks like a little rule change has kind of slipped under the radar that i really didn't notice and i didn't really see much discussion about it either we're going to take a look about that and see what you guys think all that and whatever the hell else we find today so let's get started so here you go guys the pro line reaction ultra blues now these are a new tire by pro line they should should be available pretty much everywhere their pre-orders sold out but a lot of their pre-orders did go to like real hobby shops like i literally walked into my hobby shop today to get some paint and was like oh my god there's blue tires here so i grabbed a couple sets of them for myself maybe i will give a set away here so make sure you are uh subscribed to the channel and like the video and all that kind of stuff you never know when that's going to happen so here's the tires right here. I know a lot of you guys like to look at this stuff up close and personal. With a Showtime Plus wheel, they're coming in at 113 grams with the foam. So as far as I can tell, the foam that comes with them is exactly the same as the old uh, Proline ones. And there is the ribbing pattern on the inside. There's what your belt is looking like inside there. Now the tires themselves feel super awesome and they're, you know, they've really got this really nice texture to them. Um, really a lot softer and sticky. They say they're supposed to definitely be more stable at high speeds. And they're, the main thing is they are to require a lot less break in, you know, usually I break in uh, tires. It's a process, you know, sanding, heat, application of prep, all that kind of stuff. I recently did a video of where I was putting uh, the where I was putting the WAP on my tires, and those tires were like already broken in and ran last year. So you know it could take some time. Some people do sell pre-mades. If you're looking for pre-made, pre-mounted, glued, air, foam, whatever, uh, you can always hit up Tim Barth at Barth Racing Concepts. I'm pretty sure he's got some of these in stock. I still plan on probably cleaning mine up, obviously, with uh, some kind of non-chlorinated brake cleaner, and I probably will scuff them up just a little bit because it almost feels like insanity to not, like, scuff a tire up a little bit. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'll glue them up and throw them on the car and see if they squeak. If they squeak out in the driveway, then, you know, let's just go for it, right? Now, of course, I will be pre-treating these stuff with the WAP, the wild, awesome performance, and I'll be prepping with the Get Stuck. This stuff really made a huge difference this weekend. If you haven't seen my video about that, especially on all the multiple surfaces, some of the surfaces, I ran this in kind of like a dry tire kind of format, and some of the surfaces at night when we were able to really put down the power, couple coats of this, heat gun, all that kind of stuff. We'll be going over that process again in the future as I kind of refine it a little bit more. Want to make sure you guys have the right information and i know a lot of you are new and believe me i'm still learning about tire prep as well and there is an art and a science to it like you look around and it's like a, a chemistry experiment going on at like everybody's tables and then you got me with like two bottles some rags and some heaters so you know i'm going just as fast as most of them are so who's doing it right who's doing it wrong i don't know you tell me now the Corvette body of mine is a little worse for wear and I am actually in the process of painting the GTR body, but we know that it's plagued with problems. It folds and all kinds of stuff like that. Not very rigid. Uh, I never really contacted Proline about getting a refund or anything. It's a cool enough body. I figured I'm gonna paint it up and run it because you know I've got the Corvette body that's you know pretty trashed. Um, you know, you start looking at things that you haven't really looked at for a few months and you're like, well, I definitely could use a body. But I did go ahead and 
and order one of the Racer RC bodies that, as you can see here, 45 bucks for the body in stock. The thing that really kills is shipping is 23 bucks, but that's just the way it is in the world that we live right now. And a pretty cool thing I've seen on Facebook pictures of people doing it up like Jeff, Jeff Lutz's actual no prep car um, and the one that he's running in America's List. So, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. Anytime you can get close to like a scale replica, I love it. So that's great. Now, on that car, we are going to be putting on one of the straight line spoilers from Gary Campbell. Now, Gary had a very long conversation with me over text message. We were going to talk a little bit more, explaining his different spoiler technologies as far as like using different thicknesses of Lexan and all kinds of stuff. I mean, believe it or not, people are like figuring out like so much crazy stuff when it comes to no prep cars now, man. Like, it's really, really awesome. So, if you're looking for a spoiler for your car, his info is in the description below. And his email it sounds like pretty much everybody already knows about these anyway I did before as well I had just been going from vendor to vendor to vendor of course now I will be sticking with Gary because he actually is the first one that uh, kind of came at me with like some theory so I like that you know that's like what I do so let's do it so now let's talk about my favorite stuff to talk about the castle esc and the new 6400 kv motor so we all know that i pretty much wasted a weekend uh trying to get my 64k 100 kv motor running the right way and it came down to like really just a bad battery and wasn't able to get good data running on different surfaces and all that kind of stuff instead of staying at like one place for like five or six hours and trying everything out i was kind of trying things out you know kind of all over the place the only consistency i really had was some nighttime runs two nights in a row at sam's club which was great and the perform the car performed the same both nights but with this different gearing and it shouldn't have happened but it did basically it came down to, i think to the battery voltage but we're gonna see because the new battery is on the way but the big thing about the castle system if you if you look at the castle mamba x no prep racers page is people have been kind of questioning things and i know i was too when i was looking at my log not really seeing rpms that i thought i should be seeing and some other people were kind of saying the same thing it seems like there's uh, people that are doing a lot of different things with these so they're running like zero timing in cheap mode which is basically what you would do for a two turn motor uh basically what i ran last year this trinity 2.5 you know i ran it with uh the full cheap mode which is castle uh what does it stand for castle high efficiency automatic timing i believe and you know i basically just cranked that thing all the way up to 45 degrees and then controlled all the power with the sanwa m17 so some people are doing things like that they're not adding a lot of timing and that's kind of the boat that i was in this weekend i was running cheap mode at like two degrees up to like 10 degrees i never thought about running it in smart sense mode which is the way that all castle systems are basically made to run with the four pole system so i got into my data logger and was changing things out and all that kind of stuff like that the one big thing that i see on here that i don't like is just a lot of people saying oh you know throwing up the screenshots and saying hey look what i'm doing and you know some people are really doing really good as far as like sharing information but i did see some of that like you know take a guess or send me a pm type of stuff like come on guys like you can give everybody every secret and every answer that they need and they still are not going to beat you or whatever if they line up next to you mark vine could build you a car give you a radio and you guys could race and he would still whoop you and that's just the way it is because th these cars just everything is just so different so when it comes to like all this secret sharing and all this kind of stuff man i hate that like you'll never get that for me i will be as fully transparent with you as i can i only hope that i can go as fast as some of these people and keep providing you guys with the information that you need to go faster that's the goal of this channel to have fun entertain you guys and all that kind of stuff speaking of that some of you guys said hey why don't you ever have any of your friends in the videos we're going to be doing that as well maybe we'll, we'll turn our race recaps into more of a vloggy style i love watching everybody's race recaps i understand that people are focused on their race program and most of you guys are at like 
cash days and stuff like that. So it's kind of hard to like walk around and, you know, people don't want to talk to you really if they're so focused in on their program. They're not like out doing things like us. But, you know, I really want to try to get like my own crew involved a little bit more here in the radios because we got here in the channel and the videos because we got a lot of interesting, great characters. Love them all. It seems like people are putting out really good numbers, just kind of going off basic information. So it's going to be up to them just kind of, you know, get some different tires or figure out some prep and they'll be right there where everybody wants to be. So it just doesn't look like you can beat this combination at all. So I'm still in the like hopeful stage because, you know, I haven't beat my time yet with the 2.5. We'll see what happens this week when that new battery shows up. So I'm crossing my fingers on the RC No Prep Junkies uh, Facebook page there is a link here that uh david gosh posted yesterday which would have been monday um about what's everyone's youtube channel i was very happy to see my name mentioned a few times on there which is awesome Thank you very much. I of course did add my channel to the page here, but there's a lot of uh, a lot of content out there that I'm definitely going to be checking out. See what guys are doing out there. It's good to see that uh, people are kind of doing that kind of stuff and putting all their stuff out there. You know, if you type in No Prep RC on YouTube, the algorithm searches are pretty weird. And ironically, the only person that comes up in my top ten is like me. So I don't know. In a couple of old dr10 videos from associated and stuff so i don't know definitely go on there though and check that out and give everybody a like it sub to them if you like their content and all that kind of stuff for sure now it wouldn't be a fast on facebook show without scrolling through the mclean page and seeing the poor people selling their drks and complaining about their first two hits and everything else blowing up on these boy i just don't know oh it's such a shame man it's such a shame it is the ESC is like the key to growing the hobby because there's so many people that do not have the money or really just don't want to, you know, they want to play outside and, you know, they want to don't, they also don't want to be frustrated as hell, you know, trying to roll the trigger on with like a TQI and stuff, you know, so I totally get the fact that, uh, you know, they want something that works and the DRK is like the solution. So that way people don't have to waste their money and try to figure figure out like lower end radios and stuff like that they can run what they got with the drk and it's just so unfortunate that you know people really are not pushing these things very hard they're typing out paragraphs of things that they have done just to like build a case that they should get their product warrantied for free and not have to pay the $150. Like, and I believe it's actually up to 180 now because of supply chains and stuff like that, which is unfortunate, but man, I just wish I, this didn't happen. I wish, I hope a new batch comes out and it, this doesn't happen of course that means that they did find a problem and they were covering up for the old batch which would definitely be horrible so i'm not insinuating anything at all but you know again i've said it a million times they probably outsell everybody by at least two maybe three or four to one so of course you're going to get more problems but man it's like every day again so anyway that's the McLean stuff for the week. So big topic I want to finish off with is the NPRC rules. So I didn't even, I mean, we heard about the rule changes and stuff back when they were talking about it. There was like a whole blow up and drama like in October, November, and people were like quitting and giving up the NPRC. And then they brought back the NPRC and then they wrote the rules for the NPRC again. And all these classes came out that nobody's running and all this stuff while everybody else is just trying to figure out a class to like grow their local programs, which is the way to go. Uh, by the way, there's been a lot of discussion about bracket racing and stuff like that. You know, I'm a big fan of it. If your guys are running a club and your attendance either is starting to go down or if you want to keep the attendance level, if you take a look around and you see a lot of people that are just wanting to play, just run that bracket dial and stuff, man. Keep people engaged. Don't just put a fast guy out there every week to just pound people and not give anybody a chance and make them frustrated and send them down rabbit holes of spending money and all this other stuff please race directors so anyway 
looking at these rules, this is really odd. So let's take a look here first at the 2021 rules. And let's specifically look here at motor and battery. And I know you guys aren't going to be able to read this. Um, maybe I can zoom in on it or whatever when I get it into the editing phase. But uh, street out roll, rule number two, motor. Any commonly over-the-counter RC car motor. Battery, two cells, 8.44 max. Tires, rubber foam insert rear and front tires. Thread, threaded or slick allowed, no O-rings, running without foam, insert allowed, and of course there's air and stuff like that now. Um, we come over and look at the 2022 rules update here. So this is pretty weird. Like if you look at a battery right here, so any commercially available in store or online lithium ion battery lipo hv battery because you could still charge those to 844 max voltage which that is all just like unicorn dust don't believe in that um that's been proven in the fpv community years ago so these rc people are trying to make over on you with these hv cells uh must have a plug or bullet connectors no hard wiring okay that's cool tires any commercially available in store or online rubber foam insert style front and rear tires treaded and slicks acceptable no o-rings you may run the foam without inserts i don't really see nothing else here that stands out at me that like you know somebody like put this out there as far as anything there's no rules on here that i can see anymore about the actual uh chassis um you know there's the the obviously there's the size there's the things about the wings the cutouts the body holes tire prep no assist yeah, I mean, I don't see anything about the chassis itself, like if it has to be commercially available or something like that. So it seems like to me, and maybe I am just, yeah, short course based, um, you know, chassis, four wheel drive to two wheel drive conversions not allowed. So I never really like looked at the fine details here and maybe I'm just making a mountain out of molehill again. But again, it comes down to the fact that is some of this stuff really commercially available? I mean, that's pretty fine language, don't you think? Like, does back order out of stock equal commercially available? I mean, you answered the question for me. You know, does prototype equal commercially available? I mean, if that's the case, then mm, there's some people at King of the Streets that uh, shouldn't have won King of the Streets, right? but that's not in the rules anywhere about chassis and stuff now. So it's just all kind of interesting to me. It's beating a dead horse. We all know where this is going and people are gonna do what they wanna do, but that's just the way it is. I thought it was interesting when I looked at it because I never saw those specific changes actually in words before. That's my fault for not reading that, but I'm just pressing that on to you. What do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments below. So there's obviously a lot more to talk about, but those are the highlights from the week. I don't think there really was any uh, big drag races. I know there was a ton of like eight scale and 10 scale races that was going on like all over the country and the world, really. It was just like RC exploded this weekend. So that was really great to see that like the world is open back up, baby, and people are just going full steam. Gotta love it. Now, if we could only get the supply chains under control, get the gas prices down, get the food prices down so we could spend some more money on some rc shit so anyway guys thanks a lot to everything lucky say goodbye say goodbye we will talk to you guys on the next video peace